So when I come all the way to Salford, I actually live on the other side of Manchester, so it takes me around an hour, an hour and 15 minutes to get here. But um, I don't really find that time wasteful. I use apps like uh, the Microsoft Word app to write essays and actual research. And at the moment on buses, you can get Wi-Fi, so I use different apps like you, the Google apps to search different well, research really, um, and we have an app that we use at college as well, which is Seesaw, so you can put notes and uh, different things that will build up like your production logs and stuff, so that's stuff that I use on the bus on my commute to help me with my college work without actually wasting that time, and I find that it really does help me. Online learning is evolving very rapidly. There's very little relationship between the online learning of today and the old distance education of the past. This is providing new opportunities for students all the time. So to take one example, Michelle, sure. who we've heard from, has a long and difficult commute to university. For her, being able to get access to her courses while she's traveling enables her to use her time far more effectively and to hold down a job at the same time. And there are thousands of students in Michelle's position. Another student who we spoke to suffers from an acute anxiety disorder. As a result of that, he wasn't able to be present in conventional classroom situations, and he was able to learn offline in the safety and security of his own home, keeping his contact with other students and people down to the minimum. As this student looks back, he credits online learning with giving him every opportunity that he's had to study. Obviously here, this new technology is widening access in ways uh, that older approaches to teaching just could never have achieved. Most students have had a positive experience with online learning, but this doesn't mean that we should go online for the sake of being online. Firstly, we need to be very careful about design. We need to make sure that online learning is a holistic design. We take care to design in the most effective way possible. But secondly, and probably more importantly, Teaching and the purposes of teaching should always become before the technology. Teaching comes first. So let's hear what some students have to say about all of this. In the classroom, um, a number of technologies were used because it was a computing course. Um, one of the absolute best things that I saw was like a live um, voting like uh, system. I can't quite remember what it was. But um, basically the, the lecturer would, would ask a question and then people could vote, you know, lot, lots of people are quite timid about raising their hand in a, in a lecture to answer a question or whatever, so you bypass that by putting it on their phones, you know. Um, and people could answer and then you could see, you know, you couldn't, it's all anonymized, so you couldn't see who'd voted for what or who'd answered with what. But, you know, you could, you could go, oh, what's the answer to this question? And then two minutes later you'll see a long list of answers. And some of them are some of them are right, some of them are not. But you get a really good judge of where the class is at. So that was probably the best instance of of technology used in a classroom. In college, we use Padlet to um, get assignments about different studies and artsy things. And currently, we're doing photography actually, and we have to do Padlets about artists and different photographers, and you know the sort of um, photography that they do and what makes them different. So we use Padlet to keep that all organized. And we use Prezi, which is like a new age sort of PowerPoint that's more better than PowerPoint because PowerPoint's kind of old school and it's like retro now. But yeah, but yeah, so Prezi is kind of like the new age, cooler, hipper sort of PowerPoint in a way, I guess. But yeah, like that's the main ones that we're using at the moment, at least but th there's many more that I could go on forever talking about like bubble dot, is it bubble dot, bubble dot us maybe? I don't know, I, I don't know, it's got a weird name. And um, emails as well, and yeah, just many, 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 many things that I, I could spend forever going into. I guess we could, college could be using more of them because it would help people and you know, like keep stuff more organized, but at the same time being a student here already, it's kind of confusing enough as it is with the amount of social networks that we've made an account for already. So maybe not, maybe not. I think we're good. Niall talks about technology fatigue. Rhoda, for her part, doesn't like 
for using Facebook and resents the fact that her university assumes that she is comfortable uh, in using Facebook. So clearly, as teachers, there are concerns that we must take into account in the use of social media. But there's another point here that's significant. Of course, if we are using social media for teaching, then we are not able to collect the data about our students in the same way as we can on a VLE platform, for example. So a second consideration, in addition to taking into account students' views on social media, is an assessment of the value of the data that these media are providing. <clears throat> if the data is valuable to us, then we obviously need to move away from social media and start to consider collecting student data in different ways. Of course, it's not always necessary to collect data um, about how students learn, and social media can be used very effectively in learning and teaching without collecting data. And while our students may be very sophisticated users of social media, as we've heard, that doesn't necessarily mean that they can anticipate the sorts of opportunities that the future might bring. So we found when we spoke to students that although they could talk about a very wide range of applications that meant a lot to them in their everyday lives, when we asked them to look ahead and think to the future, they often found it quite difficult to imagine the sorts of applications that could make a positive difference were they to be developed and applied in the future. But when we did prompt them a little bit and get them to think a little bit more about what some of these possibilities were, they became excited about the opportunities of the future and what new forms of learning technology could do to contribute to the richness of their learning experience. So let's hear what they had to say. I think they could do with like maybe getting some apps for like uh, subjects because um, it makes it a bit more fun for the people. Nowadays everything's on the phone and social media um, or on the computer. So where we use emails to communicate with our uh, teachers, um, I think sometimes apps could be good for like maybe sending in your work and getting feedback. So I think that could be like maybe a bit more of a fun way to approach your work. For music, I think it'd be um, a really good way um, to work because it takes about maybe 30 seconds, maybe to a minute to like upload maybe a piece of coursework or a recording something um, to get feedback. And if you had the app, the app could notify you a lot more than, because the emails that I've got on my phone, like uh, I use Outlook, um, you have to log into it and refresh it for your emails to come through and the app could give you a notification and it just, like you could even make it more broader so that more people can give you feedback so it's a bit more open like a social media account. So I think um, for feedback it would be brilliant because um, it's taken that kind of step where you're going from just having a limited person telling you what you can and can't do to improve to open it up to a few people that may be in your lesson to give you a bit more of a broad perspective. SoundCloud is uh, the same, like you can listen to other people on there um, and you can give feedback but I think you, the university could take something from that and kind of uh, twist it a little bit to make it specific to the university and your course and maybe put like, you know, like feedback forms and stuff on it and um, how it fits your grade boundaries and stuff. If you could make the phone, yes, like self-pace you, in, so it knew when you were working, for example. I don't know how it would do that, but in the same way, a while ago, people would have been like, I won't know how the phone will be able to work out if you're doing exercise. And obviously there, one's easier because you can use GPS and movement, but if it could tell without you telling it to how much you've been working, and just when the end of the day, you look at your phone and now I get a thing saying you've walked 75 minutes worth of exercise or you've done 75 minutes of exercise. If it went, you've done 40 minutes of work today, the day after I'd be like, oh, I need to catch up from that 40 minutes of work. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? If, just knowing, just, there's, there's, it's so easy when it comes to university to, to like if you go to university, you go hang out with your friends, you go and sit in the buildings around here in the library. You can be there and not be doing any work, right? And if there was some way of really 
like identifying exactly how much work you've been doing, just knowing that figure as a like as a highlighting it to yourself would be it would be so useful.